Did you know that cursing and swearing can actually help us deal with pain, physical or emotional? My name is Dr. Scott Giacomucci. I'm a trauma therapist and trauma educator. And today I wanted to talk a bit about the connection between swearing and cursing and reducing pain. I don't think it's any coincidence that when we're hurt, we're frustrated or irritated, we have this inner urge to drop an F-bomb or to curse or to swear or, or say a bad word. Some of the research actually suggests that when we swear, we're activating the autonomic nervous system and specifically an autonomic arousal and that it's producing this stress-induced painkiller within our body and within our nervous system. A natural painkiller, an organic painkiller. And that the act of swearing is numbing our pain. When I learned about this and, and learned that there was some real research to support it, I thought this was fascinating. And it changed my way of approaching swearing in therapy. In the past, I'd have clients who would curse or swear in the course of trauma therapy, either in an individual session or during a group session, and then they would, you know, apologize for it. And now when it happens, I, I tell them, you don't need to apologize. Cursing is actually helping you tolerate the pain that you're feeling uh, as we engage in this tough work together. So if you feel like you really need to curse, then go right ahead and curse. Uh, it doesn't bother me. And it might actually be helping you. Catch is the more often that we curse, the less of an impact that cursing is going to have on numbing our pain. So it is something that you'd want to do in moderation and not something you want to be doing constantly and constantly. Uh, it's kind of like any other painkiller. The more that you take it and use it, the higher of a tolerance that you build for it and the less of an impact it has on you. So I'd suggest that you save it for when you really do need it. Of course, uh, when I tell my clients about cursing, I, I usually tell them to keep this between me and you. Don't be going and telling your mom and your friends and, and the other therapists you're working with that uh, Dr. Scott told you to, to curse all you want. And we all get a, a nice laugh out of that. So in terms of the actual research about this, there was uh, one study where they asked participants to take their hand and stick it in a bucket of ice water. And they had two separate groups doing this. So one group was encouraged to curse and swear as much as they wanted or felt urged to. And the other group was instructed to not curse or swear at all. They weren't allowed to curse or swear. And they tracked how long people in each group were able to keep their hand in the ice water. And then, you know, calculated the average across the two groups. And what they found was the group that was cursing and swearing could keep their hands in ice water and tolerate the pain and stress and discomfort of it significantly longer than the group that was not allowed to curse or swear. Uh, there was another study that tried to expand on this one. And they broke it down into different factors related to swearing. Like, what is it about swearing that seems to really reduce our pain? Is it because it's funny? Did you know the F word is actually ranked in the top 1% of funniest words in the dictionary? So they wanted to know, is it the humor of it that provides that pain-killing effect? Or is it a distraction that when we're feeling distressed and hurt, that cursing allows us to kind of distract ourselves? Or is it that we're channeling that physical pain into some sort of emotional response when we're cursing? And is that the part of it that really provides the pain killing effect? So in this study, they made up two curse words. And these two curse words that they made up were fouch and twiz pipe. Yeah, they, their experts decided that these two words sounded kind of like curse words, but they weren't exactly curse words. And they replicated this study with the, the ice water with a third group that was instructed only to use these made up curse words. And what they found was that the made up curse words didn't have the same effect as a real curse word. And from this study, they looked at it from all the different angles 
And what they uh, concluded was that it seems like curse words, we have some sort of emotional connection to them that allows us to channel our physical pain into this emotional release through cursing. And that the hypothesis that it was distracting us or that curse words were funny uh, did not seem to hold up in this research study. So it really seemed to be related to the, the emotional connection and the emotions involved in the actual curse word. They found that cursing, and, and specifically the F word, increased pain tolerance and pain thresholds by 33%. That's pretty significant. So one simple thing you can do to increase your, your tolerance to pain is to let out a curse every once in a while. Some of the other studies about cursing and swearing uh, also confirmed and replicated that swearing helps reduce pain. And specifically, there was a study or two that looked at social rejection and social isolation. And again, they found that swearing helped reduce the emotional distress related to rejection and isolation. And there, uh, there was another aspect of a study that they had people remember a painful or difficult memory and encourage them to swear. And again, swearing helped them tolerate the distress and actually reduce the emotional distress of a painful memory. So there's multiple studies here looking at swearing as a painkiller for multiple different types of physical and emotional pain. Some scientists believe that when we're swearing, that there's that it's similar to an animal-like response to threat or pain, such as grunting or roaring, and that the swearing kind of replicates that animal-like response. And in doing so, it's producing this shot of adrenaline and endogenous morphine within our bodies and within our nervous systems which is producing this pain-killing effect. So next time you're hurt, you might consider swearing to numb the pain. And I want to encourage you not to overdo it. Um, you know, of course, you can get yourself into, into some trouble, but if you're swearing too often or in the wrong context, you know, swearing isn't always socially acceptable in certain situations. So you want to make sure you're not overdoing this. Uh, and if you swear too often, the emotional impact of the word is going to start to disappear and it's not going to have the same uh, beneficial effect. So I would encourage you to really reserve those curse words and swear words for when you really need them and you're really in pain and need some relief from that pain. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel here and check out some of the other videos. And uh, I hope that... Um, these videos can be helpful in, in your journey of healing from trauma or helping other people heal from trauma.